Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Another authentic reenactment of a case transcribed from the files of the Texas Rangers. Dates and places in the following story are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Friends, every day, Monday through Friday, there's top entertainment all day long when you set your radio dial to NBC. Listen for Double or Nothing and you'll hear one of radio's funniest quiz shows. Walter O'Keefe consistently comes up with great comedy entertainment Monday through Friday on Double or Nothing. Listen and you'll agree. And then there's the program with a heart, Strike It Rich. The grand entertainment that Warren Hull brings you every day on Strike It Rich is just what the doctor ordered if you suffer from the housework blues. And from Chicago, Tommy Bartlett brings you Welcome Travelers, interviews with the many interesting guests who each day pass through the Windy City. And for more fun, listen for Bob and Ray, those two zany comics. Then, of course, there's Music and Charm with Dave Garraway. So remember, every day, Monday through Friday... Chase your blues away with the wonderful daytime programs on this station of the NBC Radio Network. Now here's today's Tales of the Texas Rangers. And now from the files of the Texas Rangers, the case called Illegal Entry. It is 10.30 on a night late in August, 1940. In the southwest Texas town of El Corso, near the border, the streets of the Mexican section are dark and quiet. A man stands smoking a cigarette in a doorway on one of the darker streets. When he hears steps approaching, he throws his cigarette away. Hey, senor. See? Si. I want to ask you something. See? Si. What is it? You know some people named Gomez live on the street? <laughs> Senor, on this street are maybe ten Gomez families. Which one you mean? They're supposed to live at number 624. I couldn't find the house. Well, this is no surprise. The house numbers, they go only to 500. Well, this can't be. Here, look, it's written on this piece of paper, 624. Yes, yeah, it's too dark. I cannot see the paper. Can you see this knife? Get <laughs> Guide. You make one move, you never move again. What do you want? Your money, give it to me, all of it. I got no money. Give it to me. I say I got no money. If I got money, you, you're not going to get it for you. I'll kill you. Give me that knife. See, I'll give it to you. Ah, my arm. I'll kill you. Help! Help! Shut up, you. Help, thief! Come back here. Stop him. Stop the thief. There he goes around the corner. He's going up the stairs. Get back, Rocky. What is all Shut up, you. Get back in that room. What? Sh- sh- shut up, Rice. Let you throw. Is he... You all alone here? Si, senor. What do you want? Where's that door, Lito? At the back. Come on. We go out. No, senor. You want me to use this knife on you? Senor, I... Come on, I said. Wait a minute. This pocketbook on the table. You got money in there? Senor, please. It's my paper the whole way. Please. See, see, this is better. Yeah. Now we go down. Oh, no. Go on, go down. You remember the knife and me were right behind you. Come on, hurry. Get good to fight. Come here. Now look, we're going out to the street. Anybody stop us, we just start for a walk. You hear that? Now, put your arm through mine. The knife. See, si. and if you tip off anybody, I push that knife right through you. Now, come on. Walk. This way, to the right. Where are you taking me? Shut up and walk. Faster. Come on, faster. People searching for the fugitive became suspicious when they saw a light on the Maria Santos' front door and failed to receive an answer to their knocking. 
the sheriff was summoned. When he gained entrance to the room and saw the back door open, he phoned for assistance from the Texas Rangers. Rangers Jace Pearson and Clay Morgan were assigned. Ranger Morgan arrived first, and after a preliminary investigation, went out to his car to send a radio call. Can KDXA give lab crews approximate time of arrival? Lab crew will be at El Corso within two hours. 10-4, unit 22 clear. KDXA Austin. Over here, Jace. Been here long, Clay? Oh, maybe half an hour. Left the sheriff in charge upstairs. The report I got said a hold-up man stabbed somebody. Yeah, and then took off. Happened about two hours ago. Fellow hurt bad. Just his arm. He helped chase the thief. People around here think the man went into this building. What do you think? Well, I know he's not here now. There's a room upstairs with a back door open. Man could have gotten in and taken the girl that lived there along with him for protection. You sure she wasn't in on the deal? Well, I thought of that, but the fellow who was stabbed said there was only one person. The stuff from the girl's purse is dumped all over the place. She could have been robbed, too. Anybody get a good look at the thief? Well, the victim said the man was Mexican. Couldn't see his face, though, too dark. Uh, any possibility of prints up in the girl's room? Well, I found a few on her purse, pretty blurred. They could be the girls. I called the lab anyhow. Uh-huh. Well, looks like our best bet's to find that girl. You have a description of her? Better than that. Found a picture in her room. Yeah, one on the left is her. I'm going to take it over to the sheriff's office now and put it on the wire. Anybody doing a house to house? Yeah, the deputies are taking care of that. Well, I better get moving. You coming along? No, I reckon I'll get upstairs and have a quick look around. And I'll give those deputies a hand looking for the girl. Okay, Jay. See you as soon as I get... Clay! Clay! Oh, hello, Sheriff. Oh, howdy, Jace. You're just in time. All right, what's up? My deputy called. They've located Maria Santos. She all right? I don't know. My men found her in a boxcar down at the freight yards. When we arrived at the freight depot, we saw attendants carrying Maria Santos on a stretcher toward an ambulance. She'd been badly beaten, but she was still conscious. We decided that since she was the only person who had seen the man we were after, it was necessary to get a statement from her immediately. I got the doctor's permission to question Maria on the way to the hospital. As soon as she was settled in the ambulance, I climbed in. He could still be around the yard somewhere, Clay. The sheriff and I will go over the place with a fine-tooth comb. See you later, Jace. Oh. I'm Ranger Pearson, Miss Santos. Oh, did you, did you find him yet? No. That's why I'd like to ask you a few questions. Will it hurt you too much to talk? I can talk, senor. It's only that... Oh, my side. Did he stab you? Well, when we walked to the freight yard, he held the knife at my side. And he kept sticking me. You get a good look at his face? Oh, si, sí, senor. The face I will never forget. Have you ever seen him before? No, senor. I, I don't think he's from El Corso. Maybe... Maybe he's from Mexico. Can you give me an idea what he looked like? Something that'll help us identify him. Well, he had two scars. What kind of scars? One under his eye, a little one, and a bigger scar at the corner of his mouth. Make him look like he's always smiling. But this man, he's not the kind who smiles. Did he take you directly from your room to the freight yards? Yes, yes senor. He made me walk through the streets with him. Sometimes we pass people. I, I want to yell, but he had a knife at my side. He gets sticky. What happened when you got the freight yards? Well, we walked and we keep on walking. I was tired, but he wouldn't let me stop. Then I heard the sheep cry. The sheep? You see, on the freight train, the train began to move and... They... All of a sudden, this man, he get excited. He made me run over to a box car that stand by itself. Was that when he hit you? I think so. It's hard to remember now. Did you see where he ran after he hit you? No, senor. The last thing I remember, I see his face. His mouth that looked like he was smiling. And you don't have any idea if he ran toward that moving train? No. Senor, this man, you think maybe he'd get away on the train? That's hard to say, Miss Santos. We're going to do our best to find out. <laughs> As soon as we reached the hospital, I got a ride back to the freight yards. Our man had not been found. I figured it was more than an even chance he had escaped on the freight train Maria described. I checked with the train master. He informed me that a train carrying sheep had left several hours before. It was a slow freight due in Lubbock at noon the next day. I picked up Clay and we headed north on the highway which paralleled the railroad tracks. Ought to be catching up with the train pretty soon, Jase. Uh-huh. What do you figure on doing when we come alongside? Uh, how much we can do till it's light. I was thinking about that. If we try to stop the train now, he might get away in the dark, but it won't be light for over an hour. Yeah, no. Hey, 
Bet that's it up ahead. Aren't those caboose lights? Yeah, looks like them. She's not moving very fast. It gives you a funny feeling knowing our man might be riding that baby. Wish we could be sure, though. I got a hunch he had a train getaway in mind when he took the girl down to the freight yards in El Corso. What are we going to do? Drive alongside the train till daylight? Uh, that's too risky. If he is aboard and happens to spot us, he'll get suspicious and skip. Be better if we stop someplace up ahead and wait for him. You got any ideas? Not yet. Get the map out of the glove compartment, will you, Clay? Yeah. What do you want to know? See if you can locate the next station the train's due to pass through. All right. Let's see. Yeah, nearest town from here would be Hamlet, about 12 miles up ahead. 12 miles. That won't give us too much time. Anything north of that? Mm, not for 40 miles. Well, then it'll have to be Hamlet. What do you have in mind? We'll need some advice about the best place to have the train stopped. We've got to get word to the engineer and warn him what's going to happen. Unit 10 to KTXA. KTXA to Unit 10. Go ahead, Unit 10. This unit now alongside northbound freight train number 24, positioned 12 miles south of Hamlet. Believe man who committed El Corso holdup aboard train. Can KTXA relay message immediately to railroad operations chief? Can do. What is the message, Unit 10? In order to make search of train as early as possible after daylight, this unit requests that engineers stop train at some suitable point north of Hamlet, Texas. Suggest unpopulated open area to be selected to reduce chance of fugitives' escape. 10-4. This unit will check with Hamlet's station master to learn if message was received in time for him to deliver it to train. 10-4. Unit 10, clear. Now there's the engine, Jace. Sure is a straining up that hill. Yeah, let's hope it keeps on moving slow. A lot of things have to happen before that train passes through Hamlet. The door must be around the other side. Yeah, sounds like the station master's doing some typing. That could be the message for that freight. If he doesn't type any faster than that, the train will be in Lubbock before he finishes. Howdy, gents. Hey, you must be them rangers want to have 24 stop. That's right. Just got the message in on the ticker here. Typing it up now. And don't let us disturb you. Oh, you ain't disturbing me. Not a bit. As long as I've been here, I learned how to type pretty good. And talk same time. Uh-huh. Uh, going to have the engineer stop 24 up at Twin Forks Junction. Uh, if that's all right with you fellas. How far is that from here? Uh, 18 and a half miles. Oh, it'd be good and light time she gets there. Eh? Pretty flat country. Oh, flat and palm of your hand. You can see two or three miles both sides of the track. That's fine. Hey, isn't that the train? Yep, yep, that's her. Yeah, right on time, too. Well, you sure you're going to finish that message before it gets here? Why, sure. She's got a good quarter mile yet. Here we are. Now, just get me a couple of water hoops. My landed. I'll be ready. Can we help you? Nope. I got him right over here. Yep. Say, uh, I understand there's some kind of criminal on that train. We think so. Uh, I don't want to rush you, but that train sounds pretty close. Now, now, don't you worry, Ranger. She's only down by the first switch. Got plenty of time. Old Steve Dillon and his conductor will have their arms through those hoops just when they're supposed to. Uh, say, uh... You rangers want to come out on the platform with me? Yeah, we'll come along, but we'll have to stay out of sight in case our man happens to be watching. Yeah, sure. Uh, you can stand right behind these posts here. Thanks. Uh, can't nobody see from the train behind these here posts. Uh, be back in a minute or two, rangers. By the way, he was moving. I was sure he wouldn't make it. I reckon when you've been at this as long as he has, you get pretty good at timing. One hoop. Yeah, keep your eyes open, Clay. Maybe we'll spot somebody aboard. Not if he'll poke his nose out now. Probably sleeping. Maybe so. Mostly sheep card. Not likely he's one of those. Yeah, it's hard to say. There's enough others for him to hide in. Clever, John! Well, well, they got the message, Rangers. Reckon the rest is up to you. Thanks. Come on, Clay. Let's go meet a train.
In just a moment, we will continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Have you ever seen lightning strike? Then you know how cerebral palsy strikes, swiftly, crazily, without warning. And it could happen to you or to your child. If you should be stricken as a result of an accident or shock or illness, you'd need costly and highly specialized care. But would that care be available? It's shocking but true that right now, 92 out of every 100 who suffer from cerebral palsy must go without that necessary care because there just aren't enough facilities. Think of it, hundreds of thousands of people suffering needlessly when they could be helped. But in spite of this tragedy, there's still hope. Real hope that stems from present-day research and treatments. You can help the more than 550,000 sufferers of cerebral palsy get these vitally needed benefits and become self-sufficient citizens. Send your contributions to United Cerebral Palsy, care of your local postmaster. Forget them not. And now the second act of Tales of the Texas Rangers. We continue now with Tales of the Texas Rangers and our authentic story, Illegal Entry. We drove toward Twin Forks Junction where the train was due to stop. On the way, we radioed headquarters and asked for some officers from the nearest town to assist us. Four of them were waiting when we arrived just past daybreak at the junction. As I gave the men last-minute instructions, the train was visible in the distance. We don't have much time, men, so we better get moving. Constable, you take a man and head down the track. Work from the caboose forward as soon as the train stops. You other two men cross the track. When the train stops, split up and work from the middle toward both ends. If you spot them, sing out. Yeah. Reckon we better get the rifles, Chase, just in case he makes a break across that flatland. Yeah. Sure hope he hasn't jumped off somewhere along the line. If he got on, I don't think he jumped. He doesn't know we're on his trail. I guess you're right, it's that. He'd be anxious to get as far as he could from El Corso. Hey, here she comes. We better get over and signal the engineer exactly where we want him to stop. Seems like he's going pretty fast. Reckon that old station master got the message mixed up? I don't think so. He's starting to slow down now. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Want to try this boxcar first? Uh Uh-huh. All right. Not in here. Next one's a sheep car. Probably won't find him in there. Yeah, we just checked to make sure if he played. Huh? A gondola car down there. Yeah. See? Somebody poked his head over the side just for a second. Come on, we know you're in there. Come on out. Show you so? Hold this rifle. I'm going up and get him. Right. I'll keep it covered, Jace. Oh, watch yourself. Okay, you. Come on, get up and get out of that corner. I said, come on. I guess you. I guess you. Drop that knife. Let me go. Let me go. I said, drop that knife. That's better. Now oh, I'll take it. My shoulder. Come on, get out of this car. Move. Okay, up over the side. You all right, Jay? Yeah. you want from me? I didn't do nothing. Yeah, it looks like the boy we want, Chase. Uh Uh-huh. Those two scars on his face, check with the description. (laughs) Tell the engineer to go ahead, Clay. Sure. Okay, we've got him. What's your name? I didn't do nothing. What do you want me for? What's your name? Jose Lagura. You're under arrest, Jose. Por qué? Robbery, assault, and kidnapping. Come on. I don't go no way. Yeah. Grab him, Jay. Grab him. Yeah. You don't get me. Put the cuffs on him, Clay. Yeah. You got the wrong man, Senor. I didn't do nothing. Maybe not. A couple of people saw you last night. Could be you'll change your tune when they see you again. Come on. <laughs> We took our prisoner back to El Corso and delivered him to the sheriff. 
For two hours, Jose denied all charges against him. At noon, the sheriff had him taken back to his cell. We phoned the hospital and learned that Maria Santos and Felipe Rivera, the man who had been stabbed, were both well enough to come down and make an identification. I picked up the two witnesses, and at one o'clock, we walked along the courthouse corridor. Senor, you're sure when I see these men, he will not hurt me? Not much chance of that, miss. Scarce. Just to remember him is enough to make my backbone cold. I'd like to have him alone for five minutes. Only five minutes. He is a bad one, this man. Yeah? Just go right in. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what we wanted to know. You have a record of the girl's name? Yeah, I'll hold on. Getting some interesting dope on our board, Jase. Good. You remember Miss Santos and Mr. Rivera? Sure. Both of you feeling better today? Oh, si, senor. Much ah, better. Si, si, senor. The sheriff in the next room? Uh, I'm doing some paperwork. You folks make yourselves comfortable. I'll be right back. I got the witnesses outside, Sheriff. Yeah, fine, well, Chase. I'll phone upstairs and have my deputy bring Jose down. Be I'll be in there as soon as I finish this report. Okay, Take back. your time. Uh, so long. Come here a second, Chase. Uh-huh. Seems Jose is quite a record, here and in Mexico. What's he been up for here? Well, petty theft. Came over on a labor contract about 15 months ago. Got a 60-day sentence after he'd been here a month. He's deported as soon as he was released from jail. How about in Mexico? He's wanted there for armed robbery. Mm, could be why he didn't head back over the border after last night. Well, there might be another reason. What's that? A girl by the name of Lupe Alvarez. How does she fit in? Well, they used to go with her. At his trial, he told the judge he stole the money so he could marry her. Howdy, folks. Reckon you can identify the man who roughed you up last night? I know see him, senor, but if I hear his voice... I will be... know his face. It's hard to forget. Yeah. I should have been down here by now. I better go see what's holding up the works. Remember now, when he comes in, you don't have to say anything till he's out of the room again. Just take a good look at him. You will ask him to talk, senor? Sure, we'll have him talk. I'm still afraid, senor. Now, you don't have to worry about a thing, Miss Santos. Hey, wait. What's that? Sounds like the sheriff's calling us. Come on. Yeah. Hey, wait. Where are you, sheriff? Up here on the steps. Right up here. Holy, it's the deputy. What happened, Sheriff? He's been slugged and his gun's gone. Jose's gotten away. We sent out an all-points bulletin on Jose, and we started combing the town for him. He had disappeared without leaving a trace. We decided that Lupe Alvarez, the girl whose name appeared on Jose's record, might possibly give us a lead. The following day, we checked her home in Laredo. An aunt told us that Lupe and her family were in North Texas picking cotton could be found on a farm outside Middle River. On the afternoon of the next day, we arrived at the farm. Lupe was out in the fields, but the foreman pointed out her mother, lugging a sack of cotton toward the scales. Si. Si, I'm Rosa Alvarez. You excuse I'm so out of breath, but it's hard work to carry the cotton. We'd like to talk to you about your daughter, Mrs. Alvarez. Oh, Lupe? Lupe has done nothing, senores. We know that. We're trying to find a friend of hers, Jose Lagura. Oh, this one. He is no friend of Lupe. Didn't she used to go with him? No, senor. Oh, once Lupe, she go out with Jose. Oh, but she do not like him. Jose, he's crazy for her. He run after her. He make Lupe afraid. He's a bad one, this Jose. Has Lupe heard from him recently? No, senor. Lupe, she does not even know he's back from Mexico. How'd you know he was back? Why should I not know, senor? He was here only a few hours ago. What? See, si. when I bring the load of cotton before this one, Jose, he stand by the scale. He look like crazy man. He see me, he asked me where Lupe is. You tell him? Me tell Jose where Lupe is? No, senor. I lie to him. I say Lupe is in town today. Do you know where Jose went? See. Si. First, he tried to borrow money from me. When I say no, he go to Juan, the boy who drive one of the trucks to the cotton gin. He asked Juan for a ride into town. Did he take him? See, si. Juan, he does not like Jose, but he's a nice boy. He take Jose with him. Juan come back yet? No, senor. Many trucks come to the cotton gin. Sometimes Juan have to wait six to eight hours. Maybe he's still there. Thanks. Uh, please, senores, if you find Jose... You will not tell him where Lupe is. He will make trouble for her. Don't worry, senora. If we find Jose, we're going to see he doesn't make trouble for anybody. Not for a long while. (laughs) 
We went to the cotton gin and found Juan, the boy who had driven Jose into town. His truck was in the middle of a line of trucks which moved slowly toward the gin. Juan told us Jose had borrowed three dollars from him and gone on into town to get something to eat. He'd asked Juan to wait at the gin, saying he wanted to ride with him back to the farm. We decided our best chance for picking up Jose was to watch Juan's truck. We stood behind an empty wagon near the gin and waited. I don't know, Jase. It's been over an hour. Maybe we'd have done better to cover the town instead of waiting for him here. Maybe. But I think he'll head back here. He wanted to get out to the farm and make another try to see Loopy. He could have walked. Uh, not likely he did. Six miles out there. He knows he's got a sure ride here with Juan. All the same, I'd feel better if I knew exactly where he was. Don't forget he's got that deputy's gun and he... Clay. Huh? Walking toward the truck. Yeah. Look at the way he's staggering. Hey, hey, Since he didn't on. use that three dollars for food. Why do you Let's sit go. up there like that, huh? Go on, man. You go and have a drink with me, huh? <laughs> hey, Juan. You know how good you work all the time. What, what's the matter you work all the time, Juan, huh? Forget Come about on. Juan. You can talk to us now. What? No, no, no. Stand still, Jose. Get the gun, Clay. Yeah. yeah. I got it. How you find it? The dirty one, he tell you, huh? Come on, Jose. You're a popular boy back in El Corso. We want to get you there fast. No! I don't go. Let's get moving. No! I don't go to El Corso. It'll only be for a little while, Jose. And I think the state will give you a more permanent home. In just a moment, we will tell you the results of the case you have just heard. Later today, friends, you're invited to hear the sparkling premiere performance of a new radio series, Best Plays. Best Plays will present a series of one-hour adaptations of many of the nation's great stage shows. Today you will hear Maxwell Anderson's Winter Set, co-starring Burgess Meredith and Maureen Stapleton. Then later, be sure to hear Meredith Wilson's Music Room, Meredith will bring you the finest in recorded music, as well as interviews with some of the music world's greatest artists. Yes, Meredith Wilson's Music Room is another new addition to your Sunday lineup of great radio listening on the NBC radio network. And tomorrow, you'll hear more top musical entertainment on NBC. Monday's musical offerings this week include Eleanor Steber on The Voice of Firestone, Dorothy Warrenshold and Gordon McRae on The Railroad Hour, and Michael Rabin on The Telephone Hour. So make your Monday evening listening a relaxing pleasure by tuning to all these wonderful musical shows. Now here is the conclusion of tonight's Tales of the Texas Rangers. And now here are the results of the case you have just heard. Jose LaGuro was tried and convicted on counts of armed robbery, felonious assault, and kidnapping. He was sentenced to 23 years in the state prison at Richmond, Texas. The Mexican government requested that upon his release, he be sent to Mexico to serve sentence for crimes committed in that country. Next week, Joe McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Joel McRae is currently seen starring in San Francisco Story, a Warner Brothers release. In the cast, you heard Herb Ellis as Ranger Clay Morgan. The role of Jose Lagura was portrayed by Tony Barrett. And Lillian Bayef was Maria Santos. Jeanette Nolan was heard as Rosa Alvarez. Al March played the role of the sheriff, and the station master was Jan Arvin. Technical advisor was Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers. This story was transcribed and adapted by Charles E. Israel, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keith. Hal Gibney speaking. Tonight, The Chase brings you more adventure on NBC. NBC.